success as well. And I don't mean regular practice, but rather deliberate practice. Deliberate practice involves effort, intention to improve, and motivation, among other factors. The most important variable is effort. One can lack the other factors and still improve skill through merely effort because the body will adapt to the demands that the effort creates. However, all the variables together create the most advantageous practice environment. Here we see a novice pianist learning a new song. He might be messing up repeatedly, but he possesses effort and intention and motivation to succeed. This kind of practice through time will make the piano player improve more quickly than if he sat down and just played for fun. It is said that it takes 10,000 hours of deliberate practice to become an expert, and this principle is sound. The more time spent training, the better you will become. With this kind of practice, this individual can eventually be playing lovely music like Derek. can be applied to physical activities as well. When coaching an athlete and developing their skills, however, instruction and structure of practice can play crucial roles. We can learn a lot from watching Derek's talent coaches do their work. Yeah, we, uh, we recruited this kid about, about two years back. He's got great genetic, great potential, great, great genetic, uh, physical structure for, for playing sports, but uh, he's just got one of the one of the one of the worst work ethics I've ever seen on this team, but uh, his uh, his parents have very have done a lot to develop our program, so we uh, we like to put him in every now and then, you know, uh, boost uh, show our confidence in him. Yep. We done, coach. Come on, we gotta go. Just uh, just bragging about your your skills. That's right. One hundred percent skill. One hundred percent genetic potential. Here we see Derek trying to throw the football to Coach Tuck. It is clear that Derek is focusing on the speed of his throws rather than simply hitting the target being his coach. According to Fitt's law, as one increases the speed of the movement, the accuracy will decrease. While this might not be true in all cases, such as dart throwing for example, decreasing the velocity of Derek's throws and making him focus on hitting Coach Tuck might benefit him. Clearly. Coach Duck should be giving him a little more feedback on how to throw accurately. Now Coach Duck is trying a more hands-on approach than last time. This might be a bit excessive, however, because he is forcing Derek's limbs into his idealized trajectories. An individual possesses different physical characteristics and constraints. This means that Derek's throwing motion should look different from his coach's. The best trajectories for Derek's limbs to move will be individualized to his physical constraints. A coach's goal should be to create task constraints that allow an individual to explore new movement patterns using their intrinsic dynamics, allowing individuals the freedom to achieve individualized optimal movement solutions to match task constraints will result in improved practice. Futsal 
which is soccer on a small scale, improves soccer skills through task constraints the structure of the game creates. Since there is a smaller field and three players per team, players must focus on controlled passes and more calculated strategies. The types of exercise and drills to promote self-discovery vary greatly. Some drills are effective, and others, not so much. That's right, ten more reps. So we uh we got Studley on a on a new uh, training regimen, really a uh, help help work his uh, arm movement, his uh, shoulder mobility. I think it's working out great. The guys on the team seem to love it. When practicing some movements, it is important to know what drills might be detrimental to an athlete's development. For volleyball, it is common to throw up the serve without swinging to get the correct ball height consistently. However, it has been shown that it is more beneficial to practice the serving motion all at once because the server needs to take into account the timing of their swing when throwing the ball up. A movement should only be broken down if it does not sacrifice the overall stability and timing of the coordinative structure. To illustrate the interplay of both genetics and practice, a fight to the death will be shown. Now we mentioned the 10,000 hour rule earlier, but the exception to this rule is height. We have an office drone here who is a trained expert fighter, and we have Gene Pool who is a massive human. The size of Gene Pool could even the playing field in this fight, as the office drone's attacks might not affect Gene Pool as significantly as his former foes. This is the same concept as a five foot person who has been playing basketball for 50,000 hours of his life going against Shaquille O'Neal. Shaq will most likely knock down any balls that the short person throws up if he's still in shape. Here, Gene Pool seems to have dominated his more skilled adversary. To summarize, genetics and practice both play important roles in the success of an athlete. Genes determine how an athlete will respond to training stimulus, while the correct kind of practice is necessary to develop motor skills and express one's genetic potential. Well that about wraps it up for the science part of Jock Science. Now let's finish it up with two jocks beating the ever-loving science out of each other. Goodbye.